Oh, hold on a minute. Something I've got to show you. You're never going to believe this. Oh, come on. I know it's in here somewhere. Ah. Here it is. I bought a baby welder. This is an Ajizvin, and that says it's from eBay. From eBay. This is sold as a 220 amp stick welder. Now I just got this, haven't even wired it yet. Give me a minute to just run out and buy a purse for all my stuff. We'll get this set up and try it out. Again, sold as a 220 amp inverter stick welder and we'll certainly try that first. But what I wanna know is, will it TIG? Did I mention this cost 50 bucks? Maybe 60 bucks? I'll flash the ad up on the screen. And that's what I paid, shipping included. Part of me was expecting some big duty or customs fee given all the China hubbub going on, but 50, 60 bucks and a week later, this thing's sitting on my doorstep. Came with a bunch of stuff too. Some kind of, I don't know, DIY welding mask for Halloween. And yeah, we'll go through all this stuff in a minute. And before everyone starts going crazy in the comments asking for a link or who I bought it from, I really don't know. I'll put the ad up again. I've been seeing these things pop up. Curiosity got the best of me, went on eBay, searched for mini inverter welder. I don't even remember what I put in there. There's a million of them. Just pick one. I don't mean to be negative, but I'm willing to bet they're all the same. See which one tickles your fancy. I opted for the LGBT version, but you know, you do you. I only noticed a few days after actually placing the order that this thing is actually listed, I believe, as a 165 to 220 volt welder. I don't know about you, but I don't have 165 volts around here. So we'll try it at 110. I'm not expecting it to do very much, but we'll try it. And after that, we'll hook it up to 220. We're gonna try it out, fair and square. Cards where they land or they fall or whatever that thing is. And then maybe we'll open it up, see what makes it tick. Okay, I'm only just noticing that there's no ground here. And they've given me a two-prong plug. Once this thing is powered up, I'm gonna be extra careful not to touch it. Wow, this thing is loud. It's like a hair dryer. 223. 30 volts open circuit. Terminals are labeled correctly. Let's see if there's any AC getting through here. Not really. Oh, 56 volts across the casework. I don't know what that means, but I would have been happier if that was zero. All right, well, it turns on. That's a good first step. Let's give this thing a fighting chance. I should have some thin 6013 electrodes. Let me get the cables hooked up. Get out. The stinger and ground clamp are wireless. I don't think these are meant to be wireless. It took me the better part of an hour just to get through one 332nd electrode. Let's see what the literature has to say here. Hmm. I'm gonna have to lean on Google Translate for this one. Turns out I've got some cable on hand, not very much. I'm gonna end up with some really short leads, but it should be enough for testing. Yeah, I went back and I checked the ad. It doesn't explicitly say that it doesn't come with cables, but in the picture, there are no cables. I'm guessing because 12, 15 feet of good copper wire would double the cost of this welder. There should probably be a ferrule or something in here. Nope, oh, you don't get one of those either. Stinger seems reasonable. The earth clamp is rated to 300 amps. You gotta give it to them. I mean, that's some poker face right there. I don't know if this thing would actually hold up to 300 amps. Fortunately, the welder is only 222 amps. You know, I can't help but wonder 
how many people out there have already bought this welder, discovered it didn't come with cables, saw how much welding cable cost, ended up sacrificing some poor living room lamp, and are now pushing 200 amps through some 14 or 16 gauge wire. That looks terrible. Look, I'm just working with what I got, all right? At least it's not lamp cord. This is what I'm talking about on the Stinger. It should have had one of these. I'm ready to go. Stick welder electrode positive. All right, ground clamp negative. Huh, I got a bum plug. They should turn enough to lock securely. That one doesn't even make it a quarter turn, but you can sort of <coughs> jam it in there. I'm gonna pick it up off of the steel bench with some wooden blocks. Cheap life insurance. Wait a minute. Was I the five-fingered freak this whole time? Oh, there was a hidden thumb. That is an interesting choice. You know what? I think I'll just use mine. Hundred and ten amps, maybe a little on the high side. I've got some three thirty second sixty thirteen. This stuff I think I usually run in like the eighty to ninety, ninety-five amps range, but let's just see what happens. Nothing happens. Again, this is wired to 110 volts. It's gonna crank it up to its max. 223. I'm gonna hook it up to 220. I've got it wired to 220, twice the danger. I'm back down to 110 amps, 108, something like that. Get out, it actually. My welding skills aside, that did pretty good. Seems a little cold, I'm gonna bump it up to 125. Keep in mind, that's what the display is telling us. We'll measure that in a second. I don't know, rather respectable if I do say so myself. That's the first stick electrode I've burnt in probably three years. Not to mention the electrodes themselves are older than dirt. I think the welder did all right. For kicks, let me hook up a current clamp. Went back, had a look at the video. As you probably saw before I did, it's welding at 80 amps. Machine was set for 125. Honestly, the discrepancy isn't that much of a surprise. But again, I'm really happy with how it's welding. I've got some 7018s also in 332nd, about the same vintage. Frankly, 80 amps felt a little hot for this, but the weld bead looks okay. I think 80 amps will be on the cool side for this, so I'll bump it up just a little bit. I'll set it to 130, 135 on the welder itself. Maybe that'll net us about 90 amps. I'm gonna bump that up higher. 150. I can't keep that going. You know what, let me just try to push this as high as it'll go.
Did that just kick out on me? I may have tripped that 220 breaker. How many amps was that? Yep, it was the breaker. All right, this is screwing with me now. I'm not a great welder, but that's just crazy. I wanna try the same 7018 rod with my HTP, 90 amps. So the rods are okay, okay-ish. Before I draw any conclusions, let me try that again with the pocket welder at 90 amps. The machine set to 150, which I think before said 90 on the meter. Same electrodes. I'm gonna try to flip the polarity, you know, because why not? Try that one more time, 7018. Let's talk about what's going on here because half of me is really confused right now. I think I know why this thing is having trouble with 7018s, but I have no idea why switching polarity made things better. Though we have learned a couple of very important things. Allow me to explain. Most important, arguably, this is not a 220 amp welder. Did you catch that when I cranked the death toaster up to maximum overdrive? Set at 223 amps, I was only getting maybe 120 out of it. So unless I'm measuring it wrong, this is not a 200 amp welder. Though I think the measurements were probably okay because the welds themselves seemed colder than what the display was leading me to believe. Though I'm not a professional. Maybe you really do get more penetration from thinking you have a lot of amps and real amps are overrated. The mind is a curious thing. I'm not calling anyone a liar. Who knows, maybe if you wired this to 265 volts, you'd get closer. Second, and probably more interesting, the reason this isn't running 7018s very well is twofold, I think. The welder has a low open circuit voltage. Recall we measured it at about 30 volts. 7018s need a higher OCV than 6013s. The OCV is the voltage across the leads when you're not doing anything. Don't confuse that with welding voltage, or heck, with welding amperage for that matter. But a higher open circuit voltage helps with starting and maintaining the arc, and 7018s want more of that. Not surprisingly, perhaps, the ad for this welder doesn't list the open circuit voltage. So unless you're already used to swearing a lot, and based on my five minutes of trying, I wouldn't recommend this for 7018s. 6013s? Spectacular. 7018s, not so much. And frankly, you could weld your whole life without ever even thinking about buying a pack of 7018s. Though here comes the wrinkle. The low open circuit voltage thing hit me just about the same time I decided to switch the polarity. So when I tried welding an electrode negative, I was also much more attentive to my arc length. I had a death grip on the 7018 and was trying to float the tip almost like a tungsten electrode, trying to stay as even and constant as possible, giving it all the help it can get and trying to make up for that low OCV. Like all good scientists, I changed two variables at once. Which of those made the difference? Unfortunately, we'll never know the answer. Sure, I could just flip the connections and try it, but no, no, we'll never know. Because the low OCV doesn't bode well for our TIG welding experiment. We might not be able to light the TIG arc. And, as we all know now, the TIG torch will be wired electrode negative. Non sequitur, you say? Perhaps, but an excellent segue to trying this with TIG. I'll tell you right now, when all is said and done, if I even pull this off, we're gonna be dealing with a bit of a Frankenstein's monster. We'll need a TIG torch, of course, and we'll need gas, argon gas. Two problems right out of the gate. First, all of my torches have these larger dense connectors. Compare that with what this machine uses. I can't just plug it in. Trust me, I've tried. If you decide to do this, it's very important that you buy all the correct sized hardware. TIG welding is a lot less enjoyable when you've electrocuted yourself to death. If we manage to get this electrically connected, the next step is to hook in the gas. This machine isn't born as a TIG welder, so it has no solenoid in it to turn the gas on and off as you need it. So we'll have to switch to a different style torch. This is a 17V torch head. Standard 17 size torch, but the V variant. V stands for valve. I suppose this isn't strictly necessary. You could just plumb in the gas line, open the bottle, and just leave it running the whole time, but you're gonna use a lot of gas. This just gives us a way to turn the gas flow on and off before and after the welds. It's a little loose. I'll have to put some tape or something in there. 
But lastly, even if we get this whole contraption to work, we won't have high frequency start. So the only way to initiate the arc is to scratch start it, basically like you would do with a stick electrode, but one problem at a time. Okay, I think I'm in business. Got everything connected. Quite proud of that adapter, but I'm not gonna show it to you. This is not the right way to do it. Extremely danger. Subscribers are hard enough to get these days. I don't wanna be killing any of mine off. Here's what the torch looks like. I'm missing an insulator ring. I guess I've long switched over to like the nine or 20 size torch. I don't have an insulator that fits the gas lens. And I no longer have traditional collets to work with the insulator that came with the torch head. Anyway, all my examples will be strategically selected to not exceed maybe a hundred amps. I should be okay. That's a 16th inch, I guess that's 1.5, 1.6 millimeter tungsten, a number seven cup. And again, I control the gas flow with the valve on the back. This is pretty much the setup I started with. And let me tell you, I'm not feeling very nostalgic. Oh, and something I'd completely forgotten. With a torch like this, with no switch, doing scratch start, when the welder is on, that tungsten is live. And take my word for it, a 16th inch tungsten sharpened to a point, when you're doing something else and you rest this torch in your lap, well, it potentially makes for a very bad day. Mild steel, stainless, silicon bronze. Interestingly, I had the most trouble with the steel. Started off well enough. By the end though, I wanted to reduce the amperage. I'm used to working with a foot controller with a foot pedal. This stuff is thin, got a lot of heat into it. By the time I was done, it looked more like a gas weld. 332nd tungsten. Scratch starts did a real number on that 16th electrode. The 16th would have been fine for the amperage that I'm working at, but with the scratch starts, the tips were just coming right off. That said, I've got to give credit where credit is due. For 50 bucks within the amp limit, having to deal with scratch start, I don't know, I think it did all right. The arc isn't buttery, silky smooth, but for DC welding, if this is a starter rig for someone just wanting to play around every now and again, I don't know, it's a tough call. A lot of things going through my head right now. Let's save that for the end. Use the breaker again. Scratch starting does take some practice. It's been probably 10 years since I've had to deal with it and I've been sticking the tungsten a lot. If you wanna try it, think of it like striking a match. You just barely wanna to touch the surface to get that arc going. If you're a little heavy handed, that'll just weld itself to the work and you'll break your tip. But plenty of TIG welding still happens with scratch start these days. Environments where you can't have high frequency. Quick tip if you're doing something important, Start off with a piece of scrap near the part that you want to weld. Do the scratch start on that. If you have a piece of copper, I think that's even better. And then pull the arc onto your work. For continuous welds, put a tab on each end, scratch start on your tab, weld it right into your work. When you get to the other side, weld off your work and back onto a finishing tab, extinguish the arc there, and then just cut those tabs off. You should end up with a decent weld in a clean part without a thousand little arc strikes and chicken scratches.
Stick welding is not an indoor sport. I feel my lungs collapsing as we speak. If you were planning on one of these for your small apartment, it's not gonna work. Not for very long, anyway. Though the leaf blower they have designed into this thing sure goes a long way to getting that smoke out of your face. This thing is still warm. That's to say I just got done welding with it, which in turn is to say if this thing has capacitors in it, they're still charged. So be careful, extremely danger. Don't worry though, I've taken precautions. Got my fingers crossed. There's no isolation or insulation between the casework and the insides. I, mean, I was hoping for at least an old sheet of cardboard or something. The connections for the switch, the line voltage, and the rectifier are pretty darn close to the actual metal of the case. The negative lead of the welder in the back there is bolted directly to the ground plane of the PCB, and the positive terminal is connected directly to the heat sinks. I guess that's the business end of the IGBTs. Yeah, there are capacitors in there. <sighs> I can't break those out of there. I don't want to push too hard. Those screws aren't going into drilled and tapped holes in the heat sinks, I could tell you that. Pointed sheet metal screws just driven in with brute force. Again, I don't know what I'm looking at, but frankly, given what this thing cost, yeah, I don't know. You decide. They did protect the line and bridge connections. There's goop on all the little plugs. Keep them from coming out. I mean, it's probably 50 bucks just in solder right there. Okay, so it did stick weld and did all right with lower amperage DC TIG. Mind you, we did not test the duty cycle, which I planned to, but now nah, I don't feel like it. Not to mention, and no offense, if you're spending 50 bucks on a welder, duty cycle probably isn't high up on your list of requirements. Duty cycle is how long a welder will continuously weld for before it goes into thermal shutdown to protect its soft, squishy bits. Some lights will flash, it might beep, the fan will run for a while, and you wait for it to cool its top before it'll do any more welding. Again, hate to be cynical, but I wouldn't expect too much from this wee thing here. Bottom line, piece of junk. Keep in mind that comes from someone who already owns a welder that's not out to get them, so I'm probably biased. However, far be it from me to tell anyone how or how long to live their life. Though it does burn 6013s really well, I'll give it that. If you're a weekend warrior who just needs to occasionally, I don't know, what's the stereotypical welding exam? Patch a mower deck, fix a gate, mess up your nice truck trying to add a rack, or heck, maybe you're just curious and would like to try your hand at machino facture, panel beating, or compartment car and you don't mind a bit of inconvenience in exchange for the lower price, or mind living in death's shadow, this might be for you. Though, if you're buying it for cheap TIG, for a straight DC at low amps, which again, it seems to do relatively well, you'll need to spend more than 50 bucks to get that. You'll probably spend, I don't know, another 50 or 60 for an import torch with a valve. You'll need welding cable, of course, an argon tank with a flow meter, probably a decent helmet and gloves, consumables. It'll start to add up you'll likely spend three to 400 in no time at all. Curiously, and this may very well be a fool me twice situation, you can get seemingly similar quality eBay equipment already decked out for TIG. For example, this one, or this one. This is not an endorsement or a recommendation, and I don't know if these will actually save you any money at all, or are any less dangerous, but there you have it. In the for what it's worth category, this is how I started. Granted, I started with a better name brand stick welder, but this plumbing nightmare is how I got into TIG welding. I did this a few times, in fact, each time spending just a little more money in a vain attempt to save money. Yes, a story old as time. I did probably spend twice as much in the long term as I would have just buying the welder I wanted. But you know, sometimes the short term is more pressing. I get that. Heck, if the import TIG welders you see on eBay were around back then, I'd have probably started there. In fact, it might be fun to get one in just to try it out. Fun in that rubbernecking, did I just see a car crash kind of way. Let me know what you think. Maybe we'll get one. For now though, that's all I've got. I'll refrain from making a final, final decision. I'll let what you saw in this video speak for itself.
which is kind of weird because it's a video of me speaking. But you know what I mean. I don't know your situation or tolerable risk level, so you decide. I mean, welding isn't the safest profession to begin with, but with something like this, you might be at DEFCON 3 right out of the gate. I got this for curiosity more than anything else. I already owned all the kit to try it out as a TIG welder. I'm not sure what I'll do with it now. Definitely gonna add some insulation before I put it back together. Plastic washers at the very least. But it may become the donor for another project down the road. I've always wanted to build a little spot welder. But anyway, that's it. There it is. It's your money. Choose wisely. And thanks for watching.